Good evening from Busch Gardens, Florida. We're here for a preview of their Food and Wine Festival, which runs from February 29th through April 26th, but only on the weekends. It's been a fun event in years past, so I'm excited to try it again this year. We usually have some really interesting food and some good food. Let's see what we can find. Got some vine people out here. Oh, look at that. It's being encased in the vine person. So this is kind of just an overview of the beginning of it. We're in Guazi Park right now. You can actually see Guazi in the background. Let's see what we can get for food. Well, before we get started on food, I did want to point out the sampler card prices over here. We've got a 15 item lanyard for $57, but that is a pass holder exclusive. 12 items for $57, eight items for 42, and five items for 32. Pretty darn expensive, but I think you get full size beer and wines. We'll have a look and see what kind of different foods we can get. As you can see, the wines themselves are $8. All right, I've made it about like five booths in and I still haven't found any food yet. It's all beer and wine. And then we've got a couple of different little craft booths where you can buy different things. Like this one's all jewelry right here. Actually, both of them right here are jewelry. It's called the Artisan's Exchange. Here it is, our very first booth where we can get some food. Nola eats. See what's on the menu. Also, look at Iron Gwazi in the background. Oof. We got some red beans and rice with sausage. That's new this year. Chicken gumbo, bananas, foster cheesecake. Oh, and then you can get these different drinks here too. I'm gonna go with this red beans and rice. It actually sounds real good. I mean, it sounds like red beans and rice. All right, there it is. My first dish of the night, red beans and rice with sausage. Let's give it a try. Oh, here we go. This is a perfect bite. Hmm. That's really good. I forgot that the red beans has like an, an interesting flavor to it, or the red beans have an interesting flavor to them. And the sausage and everything has a little bit of a spice to it, a little bit of a kick. This is good, and the rice is in there soaking up all the juices. Yeah, this is delicious. Pretty good spice too. So if you are like very susceptible to spice, maybe stay away from this one. One of the things that happens during their food and wine festival is they have an artist come out and do these paintings throughout the weekends. So right now they're painting a lion. While we're back here, we can also get a really good view of Iron Gwazi. It looks amazing. I cannot wait. How's it going, you guys? Um, Austin Daniels here. Uh, if you want to come and visit me over here at Eagles Canyon, I greatly appreciate it. Or you can find me on YouTube at Austin Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> and they also have some entertainment happening throughout the event. Like Austin here playing the guitar. Oh, I found the most popular booth here. This is the Southern Kitchen. Look at this line out the back out here. Let's see what they have available. Got some blackened catfish, shrimp and grits, Southern fried chicken and biscuit slider. I'm gonna get that. That sounds real good because I don't eat uh, shrimp or catfish, but this southern fried chicken and biscuit slider sounds real good. Doesn't say that it's new though, so maybe we did try this last year. I don't know. Let's get in line. Here it is. There is my chicken and biscuit slider. We got some blackberry jam underneath. This looks like it'll be tasty. The biscuit's a little bit more burnt than I would like, but I think it'll still be pretty delicious. Let's give it a try. I mean, it looks really good. Yeah, that's real good. The chicken is so crispy and the blackberry gives it a nice little like fruity flavor underneath. Biscuit is kind of like falling apart because biscuits do that, but that's a really good flavor. Not too burnt like I thought it was gonna be, so yeah, I would get this again. This is good. Hmm. Nice and simple, amazing. This is very good. They have topiaries doing photos of people walking into this area over here. This is Gwazi Park. Everybody always tells me to get the duck fries, so I'm excited to see those. Oh yeah, look at this shot of Gwazi too. Oh yeah, so there it is. That's the lift hill. This is where the coaster goes up, and then that's the drop right there. Look at how steep that drop is. Holy cow, this is going to be such an intense roller coaster. All right, so we are over here by the chef's corner. See what they have on the menu here. Pork belly tacos, ooh. Yes. I think I might get the pork belly tacos for sure. 
but this chicken also looks good. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna get them both. Here's the chicken that I got. This looks really interesting. It's another one of those things where it's just like, almost like a chicken nugget with the bones sticking out of it. But I think what they do is they like strip the meat from this section of the bone and then like wrap it around the top of the wing or the leg or whatever it is. And then I got the pork tacos, which actually look really good. All right, I'm gonna try this chicken first because it looks so funny. Yeah, this is exactly the same as it was at Epcot where they just like took the meat and scraped it up the bone, but like the knuckle is still in there. And the skin's on the inside. It was very greasy that way. I feel like this has much better flavor than the one at Epcot though. I don't think that I would eat this again though. No, that's not my favorite flavor of rice. Like yellow rice is not my favorite. I don't really like very many rices, but yellow rice is my least favorite of all the rices. I don't like this. Avocado was good. Let's try these plantains too. Plantains are good as well. So I think I'm gonna call this dish a pass for me at least. Now let's try these pork tacos now. Hmm. Yeah. That fried pork belly is so good. Wow. The uh, the slaw that's in the bottom kind of like takes away from the flavor of the pork belly though. But the pork belly is ridiculously good. I feel like I should ask for like extra pork belly or something like that. Yeah, this one's okay for me. A little spicy, but I like the pork belly. Don't necessarily like the slaw. That's my verdict on this one. Gwazi Park is such a unique location because we are so close to Iron Gwazi. There's the lift hill on the drop and just underneath it. Have a look at that. There is an inversion just underneath this drop right here. Holy cow. I cannot wait to ride this roller coaster. It's gonna be so much fun. So many different elements. It'll have the heart of a wooden coaster, but somewhat of the feel of a metal coaster because it's got metal tracks on a wooden frame. Wow, and look at that dive out of that roll. I thought I was done showing you guys Gwazi, but I wanted to show you guys this section right here because that is an outside bank on a turn over top of a hill. Oh man, that is awesome. And also we can see Shikra from here and Gwazi, Iron Gwazi is just slightly taller than Shikra. Up next, we've got the Wave Shack. Shrimp and bacon fritters, fried clams, key lime waffle cone. I don't like either of those first two, but I'm gonna get one of these key lime waffle cones. That sounds so good. There it is, there's my key lime cone. It's pretty interesting. Is it just ice cream? Is it just an ice cream cone? It has whipped cream on top. All right, let's try this key lime cone. Oh. Hello, that is delicious. So this is actually really hard to eat because it's not ice cream. It's just like slightly softer cheesecake inside of a cone. So it's not really melting, which is good. It doesn't quite eat the same as ice cream. So like I feel like this next bite is just gonna be a giant bite that takes out all of the filling of the cone. Hmm did stay in there a little bit. This is super interesting. Like, it's good, but it's super interesting. I did not expect this to come into my life tonight. I'm really enjoying this a lot. Well, a lot more than I thought I would. All right, up next, a booth called Hog Heaven. Kung Pao ribs, charred Brussels sprouts, bougie bacon? Does that say bougie bacon? All right, I'm gonna have to try that because it sounds interesting and it has a fun name. All right, there it is, my bougie bacon. Is it just like dipped in maple syrup down there? What's the white stuff? Is that just like dried up fat on it? Might just be dried up fat. Well, this looks interesting for sure. I'm gonna give it a try, see how it is. All right, let's try this bougie bacon. It's pretty thick and sticky. Hmm. 
Hmm. Cold. It does have a really good flavor to it. It's a very maple-y flavor. This one was pretty disappointing. There's a lot of maple syrup in the bottom down there. I feel like it should be all over it. I guess you have to dip the bacon in the maple syrup. But it's kind of like floppy bacon. This would be good if it was crispy bacon and it was still hot. I know it's hard to keep bacon hot, like on display or like in an outdoor kitchen even. No, oh, this one was like a lot sweeter than the first one. Hmm. I mean, it does have good flavor to it, but it's not uh, it's not as bougie as I thought it was gonna be. Interesting concept though. I mean, it does taste good, it's bacon. You can't go wrong with bacon, but I was kind of expecting like super bacon by the name of it. It was just good. There's a place over here called the Peacock Bar and they've got a peacock design that's made out of all forks and bowls and plates and spoons stuff like that and then there's a live musician over here playing there's a cover band playing later tonight called eagle mania it's an eagles cover band you can see people have already started staking out their spots to watch the band so we have moved out of guazi field now we're heading into the rest of the park this is a little piece of artwork that's been painted for the event this is tampa and here's a little map of the event too so before we were over in Guazi Field area over here, and now we've headed out this way towards the Garden Gate Cafe. And so we've got some more stuff that we can try. I got a couple of food items over here. And then we've got all of this area over here to try some other stuff. But there's not too many other food options to try because it is more wine and beer. Well, here's a place that we probably won't try anything from because it's all seafood. We've got some shrimp salad stuffed avocado, which sounds pretty darn good. Sesame crusted tuna and Baja Fish Tacos. We have another booth over here called Berry Nice. Strawberry Shortcake Sunday Vanilla Ice Cream. Ooh. Or Strawberry Shortcake Thrill Shake. <gasps> I think I'm gonna get that one. That sounds real interesting and kind of delicious. There is my Thrill Shake. It looks pretty good. Hard to get shots of stuff at night like this, but this looks really good. Just like basically Strawberry Shortcake. There's supposed to be a pound cake in there somewhere. We'll see once we get down towards the bottom. Like a lot of vanilla ice cream and strawberries. Let's give it a try here. So far, it's just vanilla ice cream with strawberries, which is good. I don't know why they called it a shake. I don't know that I would really call this a, a shake. It's not a milkshake, it's just ice cream in a cup. But it is tasty. And it looks nice too. All right, I'm gonna try to explain where I'm at right now. So Guazi Field, where we started out the night, is kind of way over there. And we went all through Guazi Field back there and went around this, which was the cafe that we ended up behind to get our shake. And now we're over in this area over here and we're gonna go to Seasonally Inspired. And here at Seasonally Inspired, we got some avocado toast, which sounds good. And possible slider, like a nice vegetarian hamburger. Charcuterie salad. I think I'm gonna get this charcuterie salad because I've been going on the dessert side of meals recently with that shake and everything. And this seems like a nice lighter option to get back into regular food. So here's my charcuterie salad. Looks pretty interesting. Got some cured meats in there. We got some cheeses. We got some olives. Got some roasted tomatoes. Some sun roasted tomatoes maybe. I don't. I don't know how this is gonna be. Also, is this liverwurst? All right, let's give this a try. I don't know. What, where to even start with this? I'm just gonna try maybe an olive an olive first. I mean, the olive was good. All right, let's try some of this meat and cheese. Maybe there's huge chunks of cheese and stuff in here. That piece of cheese that I just ate didn't taste like anything. I don't know what the heck this meat is. I feel like the idea of this was good, but after getting into it, not so good. <laughs> it's kind of a, like a lot of oil, a lot of salt from the olives, a lot of salt from the cured meats. I mean, the flavor was good, but I don't know. I, it just is like a strange dish to me. I would have just rather have had like a charcuterie without all the like liquid to it. All right, I feel like I only have enough room in my belly for one more dish. I'm getting pretty full. Let's go through and see, and we'll pick out the best one. Next booth is Coke Fusion. Some people recommended some stuff here. Somebody recommended the barbecue pulled pork slider and the Coke infused cupcake topped with Pop Rocks candy. Ooh. 
All right, we'll keep this one in mind. Oh, we got a place called the Cantina. That sounds interesting. What do they have here? Short rib and cheddar tostadas. Ooh, grilled shrimp elote, pork tamale. Hmm. All right, we're keeping these in mind too. Oh, the butchery sounds like a hollow scream house. I wonder what they have here. Okay, hand carved espresso rubbed beef tenderloin, pork tenderloin, artisan fries cooked in duck fat. Wow. That sounds real good. Wow. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Don't, don't get too excited, Tim. There might be another booth. I do like the way that this one sounds. Heartland. Sounds like it'll be really hearty. All right, what do they have? Forgive the strange lighting on this one. Homemade bacon mac and cheese. Bison slider. Grilled cheesecake handheld. Whoa. All right. I think that was the last booth. What are we going to get? So I decided to come to the butchery and try the espresso rubbed beef tenderloin. So unfortunately they were all out of the beef. So I got the duck fat fries with truffle aioli. These look pretty good. They are waffle fries this year. No, I'm kind of excited to give these a try. Oh, they're super crispy. Wow. That is really good. That is so good. Hmm. There's an animal behind me. Wow. They're probably the best fries I've ever had. These are so good. The truffle aioli definitely makes it better. And then frying them in duck fat really gives it an interesting flavor and makes them super crispy too. Hmm. I came to the front of Gwazi Park to have a look at where we first started and it looks completely different and totally beautiful at night. I just realized that hanging from all this garland is like forks and spoons and knives and stuff. How much fun is that? Before we leave, I wanted to come over and show you guys. They installed the sign for Iron Gwazi and it's now lit at night. Look at that. That looks so awesome. Wow. I love this sign. I cannot wait to ride this roller coaster. You can see they also have lit some of the lights on the lift hill over there. Oh, they also have some Iron Gwazi pass holder merchandise. This shirt's pretty cool. Wow. This is pretty nice. $24.99 for the hat. $19.99 for the shirt. Pretty good deal. So there you have it. That was our trip out to Bush Gardens to experience their food and wine festival. It was good. I enjoyed the majority of the dishes that we got tonight. They were delicious. I have no complaints. The event is spread out through a nice wide area. Yeah, I feel like there was a couple of lines today just because it was like preview night jitters. Once they kind of get into the festival and get into the groove, I think that those lines will go quicker and quicker as they're getting used to like building the dishes. But everything was good. I enjoyed it a lot. Good deal with the lanyard. So yeah, if you guys are in the Tampa area and you wanted to come and check this out, it does run February 29th through April 26th. Only on the weekends though, I would suggest getting a lanyard. It is a fantastic deal because you, you get punches and you can use it multiple days. So like I have two more punches on this 12 punch lanyard. I can come back another day and use those two punches that I didn't use tonight. So if you're here throughout the season or multiple days or you have an annual pass, definitely get the lanyard. It's a good deal. But all in all, a fantastic night. Thank you to Bush Gardens for having us out for this media preview. And with that being said, we are off. We will see you guys tomorrow. My name is Jackson. My name is Gus. Now it's time to change the case.